They were going around the circle and they were singing. And I asked the gentleman exactly what was going on. And he told me about the ceremony before Yom Kippur. Then he said to me, are you married? I said, I said no, sir, I'm not. He said, well, are you in church? do you go to church? I said, no, I, I do not. And he said, we Jews, we love everybody. You know, we don't hate anybody. We're not, we're not violent people. What, what, I wasn't contesting that. But it's what he ended with what really kind of offended me. I had to laugh. He said, we pray for you people too. And I laughed because to me, what's implicit in that is that somehow we need prayers. And that somehow, oh, the poor black people, let's pray for them. We have the, we're from the sort of the position where we can, we can bless them. It's very paternal, very patronizing. And I laughed and he sort of patted me on the shoulder and walked away. And I said to myself, this man has no idea what he has just said to me. And I shake my head because it's obvious that it's a cultural phenomenon that a lot that makes people react angrily not because they seclude themselves but because they have an air of arrogance spiritual arrogance for lack of a better term Chassidim remain in neighborhoods where everyday interactions are often characterized by resentment and mutual suspicion these tensions have led to political turf battles over the allocation of public housing and other government services These Hasidim say, look, we don't want to invite you to our house and because we don't want to be invited to your house. Not because we have anything against you. We don't eat the same food. We don't have anything against you personally. We have things against you culturally. We don't want to share in your way of life. We view it as threatening and dangerous. Hasidim are also threatened by Jews whose interpretation of Judaism differs from their own. I don't have a rosy picture of the Hasidic community. I work in a hospital here in Manhattan. as a chaplain, so I get called to different patients' rooms. And I see all Jews, and I see Christians as well, but Jews from all backgrounds. There was a, a young boy, about seven years old, who came for a bone marrow transplant. And I knew his family was very observant from a small Hasidic community in Israel. A few days later, the mother pulled me aside and she said that I wasn't allowed to go in and visit him anymore. And I said, why? And she said that her husband felt that it was not good for the child too confusing. My skirts weren't long enough. I didn't cover my hair. They wouldn't let me be there in the only way that I know how to try to ease some of that pain. <laughs> 